That's the free market, sir. That, that is, it's not free market when they go out and they move and they sell back into our country. But that's the free market. They made a decision. It makes... No, that's the, that's the dumb market, okay? That's the dumb market. President-elect Trump has a new name for the free market. You saw it there calling it the, quote, dumb market during an interview with Chris Wallace on Fox News Sunday. You've gotten pushed back uh, for Twitter posts that called out Boeing and also uh, the president of the United Steelworkers Association and others. And so people are asking questions, saying whether it's right to single out companies and people. Critics say it's unpresidential and dangerous for business. Let's talk about it with our economic panel. Trump's economic advisor, Steve Moore, and former CIA operative and 2016 third-party presidential candidate, Evan McMullen. To weigh in, gentlemen, welcome to you both. Great to be with you. Great to be here. All right, Evan, some will say, uh, even though they're critical, that it works. They point to a number of companies who have uh, been willing to have conversations and rethink some of their decisions because they've gotten heat from President-elect Trump. He says he's the greatest negotiator around, so is that just part of the way it works? Well, I think in, in one-off cases, it, it may have the desired effect, at least to some degree. But from a management perspective, you simply can't scale that approach. I mean, President-elect Trump, I think, probably understands this. I hope he does, that he can't simply call every CEO and intervene in every decision the CEO is going to make. So I think he understands that. I think the better approach is to reform our tax code, our corporate tax code, to roll back regulations and, and reform the way we make regulations in the first place. In general, create an economic environment that it fosters competition and therefore innovation and therefore job growth. Mm -hmm. That's what we need. Well, and Steve, how does the president-elect do that? Because there's been a lot of talk about that he's good at these showy, flashy deals and getting things done. He absolutely does that. But the hard work of sitting down and reforming tax policy, yeah. I mean, the super wonky sausage-making stuff that happens on the Hill behind me, I mean, it's a lot of intensive work. Well, look, I agree with what Evan just said. You're not going to save this American economy, which I think is still in really bad shape, one company at a time. But I think what he was doing in the case of Carrier, where he saved a 1,000 giants, is just really sending a message to the voters and the people around the country who are feeling so much economic stress that I got your back and I'm going to help you out. Now, the, Evan's right. The way to do that is to, is to do it through policy changes. I, I love when he said, you know, the dumb market. What he was talking about, I think, is we've got the dumbest tax system in the world. That you couldn't design anything dumber than we have right now where we're taxing everything we produce and then stuff comes into the country and we don't tax it and we put our, uh, our producers in this country, our manufacturers, at a huge disadvantage. So I think Trump is basically saying to these companies, look, don't leave now. We're going to save, we're going we're gonna to get the regulations off your back. We're going to uh, repeal Obamacare. We're going to cut taxes. One other thing, quick thing about the, the uh, Boeing thing. I actually love what he did with, uh, with Boeing, where he basically said, look, there's a new sheriff in town. This era where you can just charge the federal government, that is taxpayers, more and more money for these contracts when, you're, when you have these cost overruns, we're not going to pay it anymore. We're, we're going to hold you accountable. When we got a trillion dollar a year deficits, it's nice to have somebody who's going to look after taxpayers. Uh, and I want to ask both of you to react to some of his picks that relate to his economic issues and decisions moving forward. Uh, and if you can keep it relatively brief, only so I can hear from both of you on this. Uh, Evan, I'll start with you. Uh, Labor Secretary and also Gary Cohn to head up uh, the White House uh, National Economic Council. What do you make of those two picks this week? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have big issues with, with those picks. I, I, I really don't. I mean, there, there's a concern that he's choosing some that have ties to the financial industry that, that are, are too much for the good of the country. I'm not sure I share those. I, I don't have big gripes with, with those picks. Okay, and Steve, I'm, I'm guessing that you may have had some influence or some conversations about these ultimate picks. So you mean, Cohn, who was the first person you mentioned? Um, Andrew Puzder, oh, our yeah. Labor Secretary. I love Andy Puzder. He's a, he's a good friend. Uh, I've known him for several years. He's a very successful CEO, and it's so amazing. Here you've got a guy who's going to run the Labor Department who actually knows something about creating jobs, who's not a, a lawyer or you know a member of the AFL-CIO. He's actually created jobs. I think he's going to be fantastic for that job. I don't... as as a lot of people in Washington, I don't know Gary Cohn, so he's a bit of a, a bit of a blank slate. I can't wait to meet him and get to know some of his views on, on tax policy and regulation, and, and he's going to have to do that you know, soon to get mm -hmm. to know the policy community. Absolutely. Okay, Evan, uh, real quickly before we go, uh, given your background, I really want to get some reaction from you. There, you I know you had a tweet, uh, several tweets, and, and you're raising concerns about where we're going in our relationship with Russia, potentially under a president-elect Trump. Uh, we have one tweet here we want to put up. It must be clear that Donald Trump is not a loyal American, and we should prepare for the next four years accordingly. 
You want to expound on that? Yeah, I, look, the basic measure of a president's loyalty is, is his commitment to the Constitution, his or her commitment to the Constitution. Uh, he will swear to uphold and defend the Constitution when he's inaugurated. We have a president-elect who has undermined the Constitution and our dem democratic norms during the election and post-election. He's also welcomed the intervention of Russia in our democratic process and then denied that it happened, even though there's plenty of overt evidence that it has happened and the intelligence community has said that it happened. Uh, and at the same time, he plans to align us with Russia. This is a very, very dangerous thing. I urge him not to pursue it. I think he's going to. I think, uh, I think he's indicated and signaled in every, in every way for a long period of time. That's what he's going to do, even while Russia tries to undermine our country no, and our key, he's, our, he's, our, our fundamental sources right, of power. He's standing up to, uh, what about what he did with, with Taiwan, which was wonderful. He's, t he's standing up to, to China. I think he's going to be tough on China right. and Russia. I think it's fantastic. I have no, I, I have no real gripe with the substance of what he did on ta Taiwan, but we're talking about Russia here, Steve. Yeah, we, well, that's it. we got to leave it there. And, of course, there's a lot more to come on this Russia issue and a lot of pushback on exactly what the CIA has and hasn't found. We need to hear from them and not just anonymous reports so we can know more right. about exactly what's happened. Uh, Steve and Evan, great to see you both. Thank you. Thank you.